Hi everyone, today I wanted to try something a little different. So far my videos have focused on AI news from the industry plus a few tutorials on how to actually use the tools. But behind the scenes I've also been collecting a lot of AI research studies that I find super fascinating. At first I tried mixing them into my regular videos but it didn't really work so I usually just left them out. But the truth is I love this stuff. So today's video is all about AI research that's shaping the world. Not technical deep dives, not architecture papers, but the kind of research that's pushing healthcare, emotional well-being, and scientific discovery forward. If you enjoy it, I will keep making more like this. So let me know. And now let's take a look at the research. A new study out of Charles Darwin University just pulled off something pretty incredible. An AI model that can detect endometrial cancer with 99.26% accuracy. That's not a typo. To put that in perspective, most existing automated methods top out around 80% accuracy. So this isn't just a small step forward. It's a major leap. But it doesn't stop with endometrial cancer. This model called ECGMLP was also tested on several other cancer types. It hit 98.57% accuracy for colorectal cancer, 982 for breast cancer, and 97.3% for oral cancer. Those are the kind of numbers that make you stop and read the line again. So how is it doing this? It starts by cleaning up the images, using techniques like normalization and denoising to get rid of visual noise. That's pretty important because these are microscopic tissue images and even small artifacts can throw off a diagnosis. Then the model uses something called a self attention mechanism. Basically a way for the AI to look more closely at the parts of the image that matter most, like regions where abnormal cells might appear. What you get is a system that not only performs with high accuracy, but also runs efficiently enough to actually be useful in real hospitals, not just research labs. This is not going to replace doctors, but it would help them catch things earlier, faster, and with more confidence. And with this kind of generalization across multiple cancers, you can see where this is going. One model trained smartly, helping across many fronts. What a time to be alive. So let's continue with a study that OpenAI and MIT did together, looking at something we don't often talk about when it comes to AI, the emotional and social impact of using tools like ChatGPT. The study found that most ChatGPT conversations don't include much emotional content, no empathy, no support, but just information. But in a small group of heavy users, the people chatting with it a lot, the story was different. Their conversations were way more emotionally expressive. And some of them even said they considered ChatGPT a friend. That same group, the heavy emotionally engaged users, reported feeling more lonely and more emotionally dependent on ChatGPT. In other words, the more emotionally meaningful the conversation became, the more isolated some people started to feel. But, and here's where it gets interesting, the tone of the chatbot actually mattered. When people talked to a version of ChatGPT that was more empathetic and engaging, they ended up feeling less lonely than when they use a more neutral tone chatbot. And I don't know about you guys, but I definitely noticed this lately. Over the past few weeks, ChatGPT has gotten really supportive. Whenever I ask it to fix something or give feedback, it's all great job or that's such a thoughtful idea. It's kind of funny, honestly. It's like getting a little pep talk with every answer. I didn't mind the neutral tone before, but I do like this version. Even if it means scrolling past a few extra sentences, it feels more encouraging. And this study kind of explains that shift. It shows how AI can be designed not just to help with productivity, but to actually support emotional well-being. That said, the study also makes it clear. There is a risk. If people start relying on AI for emotional support too much, it can increase feelings of loneliness, especially if it starts replacing real human connections. Researchers from King's College London and University College London, in collaboration with universities around the world, have developed a new AI tool called 
MELD graph. It's designed to detect subtle brain abnormalities, especially something called focal cortical dysplasias or FCDs, which is a major cause of epilepsy. And these things are really hard to see. There are structural changes in the brain, but up to 50% of them are missed by radiologists using traditional MRI scanners. The problem is, for many people, removing these things surgically is the only way to stop the seizures. So missing them means people keep suffering, sometimes for years. That's where MELD graph comes in. It was trained to spot what humans experts often miss, and it successfully detected 64% of the FCDs that had actually previously gone unnoticed. That kind of early detection means faster access to surgeries, fewer seizures, fewer hospital visits, and less disruptions of people's lives at school, at work, and at home. And the scale of this is huge. About 1 in 100 people live with epilepsy, and for 1 in 5 of them, it's caused by structural brain issues like FCD. In the UK alone, this AI could save the healthcare system up to 55,000 pounds per patient by avoiding emergency care, extra tests, and trial and error treatments. So it's not just helping people, it's helping the whole system. And that's amazing. What do you think, guys? Let's finish the day with more progress in medical care. This time, it's about how a biotech company called Oracle Oncology is using Meta's open-source computer vision model Dyno V2 to help accelerate cancer research and drug development. With the help of this AI, they can analyze complex biological data and start identifying promising therapeutic targets much faster. Instead of manually reviewing intricate cell images, researchers let the model handle that so they can focus on the clinical side of things. It's the kind of collaboration that makes you pause for a second because we're starting to see how powerful AI can be in medicine. And we've seen this again and again. You might also remember the AI co-scientist from Google that helps researchers come up with hypotheses, test them, rank them, and build out an entire research plan. Well, this is another piece of that same puzzle, except this time the AI is focused on what cancerous cells look like and how they react to different treatments. And soon enough, this system will start working together. One AI agent could specialize in visual changes in cells, another might generate new hypotheses, a third could evaluate and rank them based on data, and suddenly you've got a full team of expert scientists, but they are fast, tireless, and working 24-7. It's still early, but the pieces are coming together. And maybe, just maybe, the future with better medicine, faster discoveries, and real solutions isn't as far away as it once seemed. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Now, you will find all the links to the research we talk about in the description below. And if you like the video, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe. It means the world to me. And more importantly, let me know if you want more of this type of content. There is a ton of research happening out there, but I want to focus on the kind of work that's actually changing lives not just tweaking the next model architecture. I had a lot of fun putting this one together and I hope you enjoyed watching it. Hope to see you in the next one. Bye.